welcome back to my channel i am bageshri it gives me real pleasure to collaborate with someone who is a master of tai chi which is a martial art form he has undergone serious training in the historic birthplace of tai chi which is the chen village in china he also holds a fifth degree black belt in karate he obtained his degree from okinawa in japan over the last 3 decades he has been a devout ashtanga yoga practitioner and over the last one decade he has been actively promoting and propagating the importance of raw food diet it gives me immense pleasure to welcome sensei sandeep desai to talk about his experience defying all the societal odds and setting an example with his holistic lifestyle thank you sensei sandeep desai for joining us for this conversation it is a real honor and one of the reasons why i wanted to get uh, mr desai for this talk was to uh, share his thoughts on the current covid situation and how you know to combat this with our diet and lifestyle so i hope we all have a lot to take back from his conversation with me well first of all i would like to say my heartfelt thanks to you for giving such a wonderful introduction i couldn't believe that it was me who you were talking about and it's me who has gone who has had such a long journey in martial arts and and also other internal evolved arts see it all began in 1978 and uh, we did not have an access to tai chi back then in fact i had not even heard about it right uh, what was uh, getting popular by the day was karate yes and uh, it was my brother who egged me into making a commitment okay. to learn karate right you know he had taken a few classes and uh, he couldn't stop singing its praise <laughs> and and he was so exuberantly describing the effects of karate you know how one person with the help of uh, training can actually fend off attacks from as many as 10 people right and that really fascinated me no end okay and i was uh, inspired to undergo training but this test this failure in my second degree black belt test shook me to my core right it brought me kind of uh, closer face to face with my destiny how did you get into tai chi like you practiced karate yeah so i practiced karate for nearly 19 years right. before uh, i made a switch to tai chi and uh, actually i never had planned to deviate from karate but what happened was that uh, after my japanese grandmaster hansi shoshin nagamine who was holding 10th degree black belt you know left for his heavenly abode i kind of began to lose interest in karate okay and i had been uh, reading a lot of articles about tai chi and how tai chi can uh, be used as a martial art as well as as a form of healing and also as a spiritual teaching right and so this kind of uh, sparked an interest in me and and i decided to undergo training right um i do not see a lot of people learning tai chi in india do you think there is if people do not have enough tai chi masters around them how how can they access this martial art form and how can they learn yeah you are spot on when you ask this question in an art such as tai chi you need someone who can walk the talk who has had a long journey in martial arts Tai Chi is not something that you can grab and run with, you know. Uh, it takes time. It is it is a plant of slow growth because it is an internal art. Anything external, you can pick it up in a jiffy. But anything internal takes a little time before what it is can be recognized and appreciated. You shared a very important point over here. Uh, like you said, it's an internal art form. It's something that should be a way of life for most people, and you can't just. do it as a profession you know you need to be able to devote your life absolutely to the art form i wanted to know how tai chi helps while battling covid you know is there any direct relation yes very much because tai chi makes you self correct okay you know suppose uh, if you are wasting your precious energies uh, you know left right and center then after doing tai chi you will feel so deeply connected with yourself yes. that you will immediately realize that this is the time i need to take a breather i need right. to stop you know I, right. and i also need to listen to the other person you will not go on and on and on because you now have become conscious of your 
energy expenditure. Right. You know, you will want to save your breath, you will want to save your uh, precious chi, now meaning your internal energy. So that is one thing that contributes to you, uh, you know, boosting your immune system. Right. And also, it, I mean, uh, there is a laundry list of benefits. <laughs> It offers a multitude of benefits. You take what you want and, and leave the rest because you will not be able to take all of them. Yeah. And the benefit of Tai Chi is different for each person. And it is uniquely experienced by each practitioner. And coming back to your question, how does it uh, help someone uh, uh, starve off this type of uh, issues like COVID? It kind of brings you in the present moment. You know, so you are so much aware, so much awake, so much alert of what's happening within you yes. and what's happening around you. Yeah. So you will be very mindful about your eating habits, about your lifestyle habits. Yeah. You know, you will have realized the importance of uh, proper rest and enough sleep. Right. You know, sleep is one thing that people are not taking adequately. You know, we, we stay up till very late in the night. The, yes. We are always scrolling on this mobile phones and uh, information, information, more information. <laughs> you know, never really switching off. Yes. So all these things, it comes, it seems to happen just naturally. Yes. And the end result is that, you know, you have uh, so much clarity in your mind. You have limitless energy. You know, you, your emotions are balanced mm. and uh, still helps with your mental health also exactly and you are so much attuned with what's going on around you and within you and that really helps because after doing a tai chi class you will not want to eat that vada pav <laughs> <laughs> you will always prefer putting something which loves you back right you know that that bread doesn't love you back right you know you are eating out of your emotion just to numb out. This actually, this is a very good point you raised. Uh, how does raw food diet come into the picture over here? Like if you practice Tai Chi and then you also uh, follow a raw food diet, how do, how do these two things you know, act in tandem? Yes. Uh, see, raw food lifestyle is optimal for nutrition. Okay. So this is what I have realized after uh, obsessively researching the topic for more than 10 years. I think it would be great if you can share what raw food diet actually means, uh, you know, because a lot of people mistake that for something that is homemade. Now, raw food diet is something more than that. Basically, the food that you are eating is completely unprocessed. Yes. You know, it's not been tempered with. Okay. You are taking and eating what the nature is offering you in its natural state. Right. And also, you need to figure out that what kind of raw food items that we thrive on, yes. we feel our best on. So certain foods need to be cooked because they can't be had raw. Right. For an example, if you eat uh, broccoli raw, you will have a hard time processing it. So it will need to be cooked because it's a cruciferous vegetable. Right. So it is very important that uh, you first educate yourself hmm. about raw food. You cannot just uh, wake up one day and then decide, oh, I'm going to switch to raw food diet today. Because it's a step-by-step -step evolution, right. you know. So how did I take my first step towards uh, a raw food lifestyle? I started with uh, high water content fruit. So my breakfast would be nothing but fruit. Okay. And then I felt so good on this that I decided to make my lunch raw as well. Right. So you took one step at a time. Yes, one step. That's how you will succeed. Otherwise, uh, uh, the failure rate is very high. So if you talk about, say, eating food that is not processed, do you also include animal meat? I mean, for people who want to understand raw food diet, is animal meat... No, there is no, there is no room for uh, animal-based foods in raw food diet. Okay. You know, mainly... It is uh, fruits and uh, leafy greens. That's what we actually are designed to eat. Okay. You know, leafy greens, tender leafy greens like 
lettuce, spinach, yes. you know, kale. Though kale is a cruciferous vegetable again, but it has, it is loaded with goodness. Okay. So these are the type of foods that we will do our best on. Okay. And the calories come mainly from the fruit. Alright. So it's a there is a process involved. First of all, you have to heal your body, especially your liver, because your liver is messed up, <laughs> really messed up, thanks to, you know, uh, tons of fats and proteins that you have eaten over the years. You have no idea. So you will have to bring your liver back to its healthy state. Right. You know, you'll have to restore your yes. liver, so to speak. Absolutely. It needs to come back to where it uh, where it should be. Okay. So that is step number one. So for this, you will have it's to a cleansing process. Correct, correct. Okay. So you will have to detoxify. Nothing can take the place of detoxification, but you can also tone down the detoxification process. Yes. It need not be very intense and very ugly. You know, if you go on a waterless fast, which is very good, but it's going to be so intense. Yeah, because your kidneys and your your organs are not going to be able to cope up with this sudden release of toxins from the liver. Right. So it's very important that you do this under someone's guidance and constant monitoring. You know, right. you need to be monitored. You cannot take matters in your own hands and just start unless you are incredibly self-disciplined and you have done uh, tons of research yes. and you know you know what you've got into. Uh, you know, a lot of people in today's day and age uh, are getting lactose intolerant. Now, is lactose meant for us in the first place? You know, because as a vegan, you totally deny the consumption of uh, dairy products. But how does lactose impact our bodily functions, and why? Why do you think you know we shouldn't? Be, See, uh, we our them? body stops producing enzymes necessary for digesting dairy foods. Right. No. So, milk is like white liquid meat. It's a poor food actually. It has no vitamin C. It has no iron. And it has got that glue-like substance called casein, which the carpenters use it as a glue. Just imagine what it would be doing to your intestines. Yes, gluten, right? Yes, there is no casein. So there is a direct link between autoimmune disorders and dairy foods. So in this prevalent situation, it is definitely not recommended. Right. It will only mat make matter more worse, bringing your immune system down. Not even something like curd can help. Eventually, you have curd, you have buttermilk, or you eat ghee, or you, you have milk. It's going to cause mucus in your body right. one day. But this happens over a period of time. It's not going to, you're not going to die if you have buttermilk, you know. You will feel great. Yes. But as time goes by, your liver will start getting impacted because of all these yes. fatty foods. I can actually vouch for, uh, you know, what you just said. Because I personally was lactose intolerant until a few years ago. And then I decided to become a vegan. And uh, honestly, it has really helped me. Uh, become more stable. I mean, it also, I think, affects your mental balance, right? I mean, when 100%. you stop having dairy products. Absolutely. You, you, just, you just feel at one with the nature. So, you look, look around in the animal world. Do you see any animal drinking another species milk? Yes, true. And, and, and the mother stops getting milk in her breast beyond the point for a reason. You've got to respect nature. There is a reason behind it. The nature doesn't want you to keep drinking milk forever. Right. Because then you come on to other foods like fruits and uh, vegetables. Yes, very true. This actually, a lot of you may be wondering as to what uh, Mr. Sandeep Desai's diet uh, is and what it consists of. So, would you mind sharing you know, what oh, yes. you eat in a day? These days, I prefer to eat uh, very simpler dishes and uh, I think 90, 95% of my calories come from fruits and salads only. Okay. I rarely, it's not like I'm 100% raw, but I'm like 99% raw but 100% vegan. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Sometimes I do uh, incorporate some cooked foods like millets because millets are very healthy. Also potato, potato also uh, has got lot of healing properties right. and you can actually lose a lot of weight on potato diet. Actually uh, people have the opposite notion right, they think that potatoes contain a lot of starch no. and carbs. It is, it, is, it is a starchy food no doubt but if it is combined with lots of uh, fresh greens right. it will it works wonders so what do you usually like to start your day with i uh, start my day off with 16 ounces of lemon water wow 16 so, ounces yeah lemon water is very effective when it comes to flushing out your liver and giving your body a kick start you know? because uh, we have slept for 7 8 hours yes. though these days people don't sleep that long uh, even if they are sleeping then they are not sleeping on time I think because of covid that could be different so yeah so and uh, and like half an hour later i will uh, not half an hour later okay. sorry after uh, going to a bathroom yes. and taking shower i will do my astanga practice okay. which goes on for nearly two and a half three hours depending on what i am doing because uh, one day I am practicing primary series, second day I am practicing secondary series, so depending on that, but it is never less than uh, two, two and a half hours. Yes. So my first meal, so to speak, will not start until about uh, 11.30 wow. and which is invariably, nine out, 9 out of 10 times, it is 32 ounces of green juice wow. in which I put all the leafy greens like... Uh, spinach, uh, lettuce, the amla that Indian gooseberry, then uh, cucumber, Cuc by the way cucumber is one of the top 5 foods that one can eat. On a daily basis? Yes, okay. it's 97% it's water. Wow. Yeah. So this is my, this is how I start my day, uh, 32 ounces of uh, green juice and then I will venture out, I will uh, you know, uh, go out and take some sunbathing. I'll go right. to the terrace or I'll, I'll walk on the road, but I'll make sure that I get enough sun on my skin. Right. And then I will have my lunch and my lunch is 10 out of 10 times. It, uh, it's a large fruity dish in which uh, these days I have been doing a lot of mono eating, okay. meaning only one fruit at a time. So these days, most I think, uh, Often times my lunch is like 10 bananas wow. <laughs> and little bit of coconut water because I have exercised in the uh, you know in the morning and I shed a lot of sweat. Yeah, so to avoid dehydration. Exactly, and this okay. it has got potassium. The banana has got potassium. The coconut water has got chlorophyll, uh, electrolytes, yeah. not chlorophyll, but the electrolytes. Something that you lose when you sweat. So this will be restoring what you have lost yes. to, uh, in terms of right. nutrients. And then in, uh, I feel really satisfied, not full, satisfied. And this will easily hold me over for another 5 or 6 hours. Wow, without eating anything else. Yes, so I don't want to even look at food after that. <laughs> because I have already put like 1000 calories in my lunch. Right. Lunch should be ideally the largest meal of the day. Start with a raw food diet. You know, is it important to take into consideration your activity levels and you know, absolutely how very, very important. Yes, very because important. Because thousand calories for someone like him can be justified, but for someone who is leading a sedentary True. lifestyle, True. I think it should be a shorter meal that should do the. Yes, work. yes. First of all, uh, you have to, as I mentioned earlier, that go through that detox process cleans your body as much as possible right. and over a period of time you will notice if you are really sticking to this lifestyle that your capacity to eat fruit will go up exponentially. Yes. I could not handle more than two bananas that <laughs> 10 years ago and I am 57 years of age <laughs> and today I can easily 10, 12 and that also I think I can I can maybe eat more 14, 15 bananas wow. without really feeling too heavy. Right. 
So, uh, it takes time your, your stomach muscle will begin to expand. So, you can fit more and more raw foods. This is where people go, uh, people have a hard time understanding and they think that a person like me who is onto this raw food lifestyle is extreme. It is not extreme. See you, you look at Indian Thali which is I have got deep regards because it is something that I have you grew up with today. for 50 years. So, I have got very uh, high reverence for the Indian yes. Thali because it has got everything. But how many items there are yes. in a dish, <laughs> right? It is loaded with calories I think. So, but the science has proven that when you eat one type of food, mono eating, your body uh, knows when to stop right. just at the right time because you will feel satiated. Right. But when you are eating many different items with different flavors, right. then your, my, your taste buds have a hard time picking up the flavor of any food. Right. You know? And then what happens is that you are not going to chew your food thoroughly. By the, by the way, you should, actually, you should ask me how many times I chew my food. Please, please. I mean, you know, that is something I kind of uh, realized uh, the other day when you said that he chews every bite 100 times. And uh, I'm, I'm really extreme here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend so this to anyone. Tell us what you think about, you know, why it is important. Because you know, more than 50% digestion should happen in your saliva itself. Right. The work that your teeth will not do will have to be carried out by your intestines. Why make them work hard unnecessarily? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And also, uh, you know, I think a lot of people in today's day and age are becoming more fitness conscious. But I feel that we haven't been further away from the truth than we are today. I think we are going terribly wrong somewhere. Because people's immunity levels are going for a toss despite eating healthy or trying to eat healthy. And there is something that is amiss over here. And what do you think is that one thing or those things that you know people are... I think you, you are setting yourself up for a major disaster if you are trying to improve your fitness without first cleansing your body. Yeah. You have seen... In the recent times, you might have noticed that so many bodybuilders, so many athletes, long distance runners, they have collapsed because they were going on without improving their internal health. So that is, that's why Tai Chi, yoga, raw food diet, these are all, uh, you are on a healing journey, you know, you are on a healing path. That's why uh, it takes time. Right. And you have to be patient. You have to, you have to be, be patient with your own self first right. and then with the world. So that's that's very important. Right. So if someone were to take some inspiration from this talk and uh, wanted to start, uh, you know, following the raw food diet, I mean, just little by little, what would you ask, suggest them to start with? I think the first step would be to educate yourself, you know, uh, look it up on the net. You also uh, listen to some of the... Uh, people who have been following this particular lifestyle for like decades and uh, you can also invest in some good books right. and there is one book that I would like to uh, refer to at the moment it is 801010 uh, it, it has been written by Dr. Doug Graham who has been an advocate of raw food lifestyle for more than 30 years and he has made a great impact on me that 80% of your calories should come from the carbs, 10% right. should come from the protein and 10% should come from the fat. If you can maintain this ratio 80-10-10, yes. you will do your best. This will give you, a, a, I mean you will thrive on every level. This is a very important point because I see that you know today people are going on fat diets, intermittent fasting and a lot of times you know people just focus on say a protein diet or say a calorie rich diet for somebody who is building uh, their body. So do you think a one sided um, effort or a diet can work? Yeah again see the, the, the importance of healing to start off with cannot be overemphasized. 
if you have not healed yourself and you start consuming the best of foods on the planet, it will give you limited success. But if you have cleaned uh, your liver, if your liver is completely healed, it has got rid of all the debris and all the fats and you know things that are not serving you anymore, then the healing will take place. And then if you eat only a humble food such as banana or cucumber, you can expect to uh, take your health to an exceptional level. Right. I think the problem with uh, you know our diet uh, today is that we do not we have misinformation around more than having the access to correct information. And I feel if you go to a lot of dietitians and nutritionists, they will ask you to go on fat diet. They will focus more on weight loss instead of actually tackling what needs to be done in order to attain uh, you know a healthy body. And I think that is where people are going astray. And uh, I, like Uncle said that, you know, it's very important to focus on what works best for your body. And before that, it's important to educate yourself. on. Yeah, you have to figure out what is suitable for your system and just adhere to that. Right. Don't listen to anyone. You, need, you must be willing to experiment with food. Right. Unless you experiment, you will never ever arrive at anything that is really, that you can call it truth. You know, you have to realize it for yourself. Right. That's, you know, self-realization is the best realization. Yes. And in addition, if you can do something like, we all can do something like Tai Chi or take our martial art form, then it, it's just an added Correct. Place. You will be surprised to know that the bones of, of our feet are not meant for sitting. They are meant for locomotion or standing or running. Wow. You know, so... Sedentary lifestyle should completely be done away with because you are going to get tight hips right. because of long sitting, right. you know, sitting in one place for long hours and that might lead to arthritic pain in the knee joint. I mean, it is really, uh, it is really disturbing to see so many people having to go for uh, uh, knee replacement. Yes. It's really, it's really sad. It's really sad. See, you should be comfortably able to sit. See, I am sitting in this position which is known as Virasan. In, this is known as Vajrasan or Virasan kneeling posture in yoga. And this is one posture that you can practice even after immediately having your meal. Because this is known to relieve heaviness in the stomach. Right. But how many of us can remain seated in this position for more than 5 minutes? Because our ankles, our shins, our uh, knees, our thighs, they are just not being conditioned enough. Look at any animal in the natural world, whether it is cat or a dog or a cow or a horse, they all take out time and trouble to stretch their bodies yes. every, you know, every few hours or a couple, every couple of days. And in fact, cat is a role model for us. Cat does not engage in any physical activity apart from stretching. Right. And yet it remains in peak condition. So, there is so much we can imbibe from such animals. Right. So the, the important thing is that keep, a, keep an active lifestyle, also do some breathing exercise. We take tens of thousands of breaths per day, but we never really stop to ask ourselves whether we can improve our breathing. Right. You know, breath is life itself. It, it enhances the capacity of your lungs and relieves stress and tension. One more question that I wanted to ask you, what is the primary difference between Karate and Tai Chi? Yeah, good question. Yeah. Karate is an external martial art. So if you are looking to develop speed, strength, power in a very quick span of time, go for Karate. But if you are someone who wants to improve your health, who has got a lot of patience, who also uh, has got a spiritual bent of mind, this is not to say that Karate uh, doesn't offer that uh, benefit but karate tends to be more uh, you i mean you will end up putting lot more speed when you do karate you will have to exert more and uh, essentially they are martial arts so at the end of the day they might bring you at the same place it's a matter of preference when you are young you want to do something that is more speedy and that is yeah. that looks more uh, that looks more majestic yeah. you know True on the, uh, I mean, outside. 
but if you are looking for something that that calms you down that slows you down slowing down not your reflexes in fact your reflexes will become very sharp with tai chi so don't get me wrong here tai chi can be used in fact tai chi was originally used for self defense all right okay sadly today 95% of the people are practicing just for the health benefits alone but tai chi at its roots it's a martial art form and uh, the guiding principle is you need only 4 ounces of strength to topple wow. a weight of 1000 pounds wow so you can imagine how powerful the force of tai chi can be yes but remember one thing that you will have to find yourself the right correct teacher you cannot learn tai chi from somebody who is not even one crash course old so it really helps to invest you have to be willing to you know sell out some money because it's a long term investment right. it my motto has always been you might uh, spend a little more money today than having to spend a lot of money uh, you know in future for any medical complications yes because you will you will you will save uh, money on medical bills yeah and uh, again ashtanga yoga is something you've been practicing over the last three decades how has that shaped you up and how is that different from tai chi um, and yeah I, that that is something that even i have not been able to understand honestly but ashtanga is giving me something that i cannot have it from any other source period you know it uh, balances out my emotions it uh, keeps me in an equanimous equanimous state, state yeah. and uh, i think it's because of ashtanga yoga that i find myself now being above success or failure right you know i can look at any situation this passionately and it has given me an ability to accept the highs and lows with an equal mind right and that is again something that we haven't seen uh, very often ashtanga yoga somebody practicing ashtanga it's really yoga. again a sad commentary that people have grossly uh, misunderstood and also overlooked and also misunderstood because whoever sees ashtanga for the first time he kind of gets a little bit intimidated yeah. because it looks so robust and it looks so tough on the body that you actually uh, it kind of it scares you off but you need to understand one thing that if you invest your efforts if you are true to yourself if you manage to find yourself a correct teacher and then you will learn the basics the basic mechanics of the art correctly then you will be able to build a very strong edifice in the time to come you know why aim low in life you know a- aiming low is something that uh, i have never been comfortable with right you know um uh, again uh, this brings me to another question actually uh, today's youth is you know focusing on leading a very fast paced life a lot of people are compromising on um, a lot of important lifestyle things like say he said that sleep is very important and even your diet and a host of other things what are the things you think we the youth will start facing if we compromise continue to compromise on these essential aspects of life soon they will be reaching a point where they will begin to feel that they can no longer deal with the issues that they are facing right they will be so uh down in terms of coming up with an adequate response right to face the challenges both physically and mentally absolutely because you know this reminds me of a very beautiful arabic saying that i had heard uh, century i mean couple of decades ago that uh, health i mean there is an arab philosophy about health they say that health is digit 1 success is zero glory zero and uh, success zero put the one of health beside the others and you are a rich man but without the one of health everything is zero right you seem to have a lot you have a treasure trove of proverbs and adages i i do have a very rich fund of uh, quotable but quotes but that is no that is something that is very relevant and i think we all must uh, 
uh, we start doing our bit to kind of you know uh, safeguard our health in a way that uh, you know we have a good future and that is something a lot of us are not realizing but uh, I think we, we have something a lot to take back from this conversation and uh, you can also check out uh, Sensai Sandeep Desai's YouTube channel he has shared a lot of information about raw food diet um, he's also shared some important and essential activities or exercises I would say uh, that can help you um, combat daily stress and make you fitter. And all the information will be listed down in the description box below so please do check it out his website link, his YouTube channel link, uh, also the link to his book on Amazon. Uh, and yes, if you and I offer any, regular sessions on Zoom yes, as well. Yes, he is a Tai Chi trainer, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So, uh, you know, you can definitely, uh, you know, learn from him. He is the master of Tai Chi. So, I don't think there's anybody better to learn Tai Chi from than him. And thank you so much for. Uh, thank you, this thank you everyone for taking. Pleasure. Thank you, thank so you everyone much. for taking out your precious time and watching this video till the end. And thank you, Bageshri. It has been My such pleasure. a such a such a joy interacting with you. We look forward to knowing more about uh, what you thought about this video and how Sensai Sandeep Desai can help you along this journey of living a holistic lifestyle. So, if you like this video, then please do not forget to hit the like button. Do share this video and subscribe to my channel. Mm -hmm.